So. Hey, my name is Christina, and I'll be taking you on a vlog of my life in lab and my life in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, they overlap a lot, but I do want to highlight not only what I do in academics, but also how I've integrated myself into the community and really build up a system of support where I can engage with all that the town has to offer. Um, but first, this is Biointerfaces and it's where I work. I'm a third year PhD student in mechanical engineering and I've entered a dual degree program to get a master's in chemical engineering along the way. The road ahead, it twists and turns and the sun beats down and it burns but I keep, keep on pushing through and every step quicker than the last this place I just wanted to explain a bit more about computational work. It's more abstract than experimental work. It's something you can't hold in your hands. Often you won't see the end result of a computation until you visualize it, um, which is after you've already ran all the simulations, decided which method is the best for visualization, and then taken it a step farther um, to actually plot everything. Um, so often you're left thinking in terms of equations, in terms of um, system physics, uh, instead of what you can see and what you can um, readily observe. And, and that is both a hindrance but also a great opportunity. You see, in simulated systems, the computer will only care about what you tell it to. So you can really simplify it down and get to the driving forces. But at the same time, the computer will only care about what you tell it to. So you can inadvertently eliminate something very important to the system and not know that your simulation is inaccurate. A benefit of this simulated work is that it's very fast and you can get at why something is happening. But even after all that, you still have to go into the lab and make sure that your simulation captures reality. My feet tread down this beaten path and I keep, keep on pushing through. Cause I get up and I may fall right back down. This is the wet lab where some members of my group run their experiments. We study rheology, which is the deformation and flow of fluids, often complex fluids. But the good thing about physical experiments is they're tangible. You can hold them in your hands and they account for physics you may or may not have anticipated because you're observing the real system with all the compounding variables, all the environmental conditions. And it can be hard to control, but it can also help you get at things you couldn't have anticipated using the model. And it can help verify models. So one advantage of experimental work is you're closer to the commercialization. So if you have a complex system with lots of nitty gritty details, you have a cell experiencing a biological or chemical reaction, you have um, dynamics on that system imparting forces, you have the electronics of the sensors you're using, using to monitor the system. All of these have research questions in and of themselves. And hopefully you can use the literature, previous experimental work, to get at what is happening um, with each element and then see the real-time interaction in your experiment. And so you can get quickly to something that brings together lots of different aspects of a project. This has been just a very brief introduction to my own experiences um, going from an experimental group to a computational group and kind of helping to articulate the things I found different there. Um, there's a group that falls all over the spectrum. Um, so check it out for yourself, certainly. Um, for me, I decided after one year in an experimental group that I was trying to juggle a lot of balls and I wasn't able to really dig deep into the problem. Um, I had to know a little bit of electronics, a little bit of bio, a little bit of fluid mechanics. Um, and I wanted to really focus on one area and go deep. And so for me, switching to a 
computational group allowed me to really zero in on fluid dynamics um, and learn that area of research deeply, um, which is, is something I find very meaningful. Um, a PhD is a very specialized degree, so I want to leave here um, knowing a subject, uh, like inside out. Uh, and that is something I valued um, when choosing my group. In addition to um, the intellectual work, I think group culture is really worth mentioning at this point. Um, how your professor and your lab mates think about success and failure um, and how they think about work-life balance. So I know my professor is uh, well established and if something does fail, it won't affect um, my chance of graduating and it won't affect his chance of tenure. There's different parts in the academic process um, and sometimes the risk of failure is quite scary and it, it, it could be that it's not a group where you can do um, projects that aren't assured to work out. Um, my group is fairly established so I can work on uh, different projects as they come up. Um, in some extent, outside of funding, I'll share more about my friending journey in a later vlog. Um, but yeah, I'm just allowed to forge new collaborations and really um, seek out problems that I am personally intrigued by um, in a group that really supports work-life balance and really wants to see me thrive um, emotionally as well as intellectually. And that has just meant the world. Uh, and it's definitely been worth um, the journey of finding the right group um, because I'm excited to wake up every morning and come into work.